We all look at random things made out of fabric and wonder if we could stitch on them right. I'm Michelle, this is my romantic tangle, and when I found a burlap bag in the craft section of the Dollar Tree, the first thing I asked myself was, could I stitch something on that for Halloween? I found this horizontal burlap bag in the crafter's square section at Dollar Tree, and of course the first thing I wondered was, can I cross stitch on this? Briefly followed by, should I cross stitch on this? If you're thinking about stitching on fabric that wasn't designed for needlework, and specifically count a cross stitch, one of the first things you need to consider is the threads per inch. When I eyeballed it, these squares looked square. When I got them home and lined them up with a ruler and counted the threads per inch, I counted several different spots in different areas of the bag. I did both vertically and horizontally. In one direction, I get 18 threads an inch. In the other direction, I get 15 threads per inch. That means my cross stitch squares are not going to be perfectly square. But I have a project that I think is going to be just fine if it's slightly elongated, so I still want to give this a try. I'm stitching Nevermore. It's by Elizabeth Spurlock of Saving Grace's Fine Needle Arts. It is in this year's cross stitch Halloween issue of Just Cross Stitch. It's cute, it doesn't look like it'll take too long, and I think that it will work okay with that wonky thread count. A few hours into the process, and it's honestly going better than I expected. It doesn't seem to matter that my stitches are not perfectly square. I'm using two strands so you can see the X's, you can see the fabric showing behind the X's, and that's the effect I was going for. A couple of things I have learned, this takes longer than stitching on fabric. I don't do a lot of stitching over two, so part of it is that, but part of it is because this plastic coating on the back of the fabric keeps you from feeling with the tip of your needle to judge exactly where you are pushing through to the front. It's not insurmountable, it's just slowing me down a bit. Actually, picking stitches out is not as noticeable as I feared that it would be, so that was a pleasant surprise. I flipped my the bag over to stitch it and flipped the pattern over so I can work with my hands inside through the opening. And that works well. It's a little bit confusing to stitch the letters upside down, but I got the hang of that quickly. What I didn't expect was, again, that plastic coating. I'm effectively stitching with my hand inside of a plastic bag. And that means taking more frequent breaks because it's not the most pleasant stitching I have ever done. I am just tickled with how this turned out. I did not expect to get it all done in one afternoon, but it was addictive. Despite the fact that it made my hands sweat and was a bit of a challenge, it was fun and I love the way that it looks. I love the pattern and I love the bag. I think these bags would be great for making little custom trick-or-treat bags or use some Christmas ornament patterns and make gift bags. I'm thinking maybe I should have bought more than one. Can Do you think that the elongated stitches make a difference? It doesn't look exactly like the pattern in the magazine, but it's not bad. I don't think it's distorted in an unpleasant way. If you've stitched on things that weren't meant to be stitched on, leave a comment for me below because I would love to hear all about it. It's October. I'm excited about stitching for Halloween, so cross your fingers for me that I will be able to accomplish even some of the things I have on my to-do list. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle. This is my Romantic Tangle, and I cannot wait to be back to with you with more Halloween projects.